Lately, people have been coming to me and asking, what about the book of Jasher? What about the book of Enoch? What about the things that Jasher and Enoch say about the beginning of creation and the flood? Let me respond with a question. Where did those extra books come from? Is there a way to tell if they are genuine? Think about this. Those books claim to give extra information about happenings from the creation to the flood, but they say more than the Bible in these books. There are only about eight people who could have had these extra books. Noah, his wife, Shem, his wife, Ham, his wife, Japheth, and his wife. No one else survived the flood. No one else was in the ark. Now think about this. Everything recorded about life before the flood was on that ark. Everything else got destroyed. So there's no other written history in the world than the history that made it through the flooding of the old world. Either one of those eight wrote it him or herself, or spoke it him or herself, or they carried on the boat themselves. And God led it on the boat. That's the only way. Everything and everyone else perished. Here's another question. If God wanted us to know it, why isn't it in the Bible? If there was more history, why didn't God just add it to the beginning of Genesis? I mean, Noah had the beginnings of Genesis. See the vlog, when was Genesis written? Noah only had about five pages worth of material. There was room for more. And besides, he had a year in a boat that he didn't even have to steer. He definitely had the time to add it. So, for those who trust in Jasher and Enoch, where did they come from? Are they saying there was more history, but that God didn't want it in the Bible, but God let it be smuggled on the ark anyway? Why? Third question, if God didn't want it in the Bible, would God make it so the Bible didn't make sense without those added books? And is it okay for you to read them in order to understand the Bible, even though God didn't think you should have it in the Bible? The scriptures tell us that the Bible contains all God wanted us to know about the past to give us hope. Romans 15.4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That's the comfort of the scriptures, not the apocrypha or pseudepigrapha, false writings lying that they were written by someone famous. So, one, those books didn't come from before the flood. They're false and written way, way afterward. Two, God didn't want us to know those books because they aren't true. Three, God didn't make the Bible so it could only be understood with the help of non-biblical books. He gave us information in the Bible to understand the Bible, if we're patient enough to pray and look carefully. I don't trust any books that claim to tell stuff that God left out of the Bible. If it's not there, God didn't want it there. Would you like to hear one more question? I have a possible answer that doesn't involve using any books outside the King James Bible. Ready? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. What happened to people who repented and turned to God after God closed the ark door? There are as many as a billion people alive back then. Check ICR, Ken Hoven, Ken Hammer, someone for their count. But there were a lot of people I can imagine if the doors closed and the fountains of the great deep opened up, there'd be more than a few people realizing their great mistakes. So what about them? No verse of the Bible says God ever opened the door of the ark again after God closed it. And it does say 
that God closed the door. Genesis 7, 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Remember that the Lord Jesus says of himself, Revelation uh, 3, verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, that is true, that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. And even in Job, Job said to God, Job 12, 14, Behold, he breaketh down, and it cannot be built again. He shutteth up a man, and there can be no opening. So what about all those people? Now, this is just a theory. You don't have to believe it. Just consider it for a moment. Inside the ark, everyone was safe. Outside the ark, the waters rose and people fought for the highest place for the rising flood. Outlive, outlast, outpray, survivor. Outside the ark, it was war to survive. But no one did. They were warned for 120 years. 1 Peter 2 verse 5. And God spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Noah preached 120 years without a single convert outside his family. But God closed the door, and it was over. But what is the deadline for repenting, turning to God? Well, the deadline is when you're dead. That's the line. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So if someone were alive, they could have repented. Even the thief on the cross turned to Christ before he died. They were alive, they were, there was still hope, but they missed the catching away in the ark and had to experience things that God didn't want them to. I'm not telling anyone what to believe. But I am saying we don't have to go outside the Bible to think through the difficult verses in the Bible. One thing is clear in the scriptures. God is patient, but don't wait too long. You won't like what you have to go through if you do. And death is the deadline. God bless you and have a wonderful day.